Hi, my name is Nathan Bronson. I'd like to present metastable failures, a pattern that we've seen in many large-scale production outages. The pattern is useful for understanding outages in retrospect, but our real hope is that research will allow us to predict and avoid the entire category of problems. The context for the discussion is open systems, by which we mean systems for which we don't have full control over the rate at which requests arrive, and for which there's some notion of throughput, usually because we hand a response back to the request source or uh, have some notion of completion of the request. This definition is pretty generic. We could be sending requests from a client to a server in a multi-layer system. We could be communicating between physical servers that make up a single logical distributed system. Requests might also be exchanged inside a single server or even inside a single process. It's important to note that not every component boundary is actually a managed API. Anywhere we have a queue and the possibility the request might fail, then we have a setting in which a metastable failure can occur. One of the core challenges when building, distribu building distributed systems is making them reliable. There's a multitude of triggers that might cause some requests to fail in a complex system. They could be unexpected internal things like network congestion, hardware failure. They could be external, a load spike or a change in the workload. Errors might also be a known side effect of something that was done on purpose, like a software deployment or a configuration change. So while it's good to reduce the number of these errors from these kinds of transient issues, the most important thing for reliability is that the system self-heals. Self-healing means that even if a transient issue causes user-visible errors, once the trigger uh, is removed, the errors stop. Of course, we have a lot of terms for what happens when the system doesn't self-heal, so we know it doesn't always happen. There's evocative things, we could call it a death spiral, or let's say the system fell over, it snowballed. Uh, generic terms like a cascading failure or flapping or persistent overload. Maybe we know a little bit more about the actual feedback loop, so we can call it thrashing or a retry storm or a lock convoy or congestive collapse. I've heard all these terms used to describe failures that follow a similar pattern. This brings us to metastable failures. The transient issue has been resolved, but there's some sort of feedback loop that keeps the system unhealthy. The feedback loop is somewhat stable. It's strong enough that it will, will prevent recovery indefinitely given the current operating environment, but it's not so stable that it can't be disrupted by dropping the load or some sort of manual intervention. While the feedback loop is in effect, we see the system is in a metastable failure state. So rather than just healthy and un unhealthy, it's useful to think of the life cycle of a metastable failure as having three states. In the stable state, a transient trigger results in errors, but the system self-heals as soon as the trigger is removed. As the load increases, we reach a point, we cross an invisible threshold at which we are in a vulnerable state. Nothing is visibly wrong at this point. There are no errors, but in the vulnerable state, a transient trigger can kickstart a feedback loop that will trap us in a metastable failure. Even after the trigger is gone, recovery only happens when the load is reduced back across the threshold or when some sort of intervention disrupts the sustaining effect. So let me illustrate the pattern with a simple example. In this example, we have a service made of a stateless web server and a database, where the web server uh, does one database query to satisfy one web request. The, data, the, the web server will retry the database query once if it fails. So when the database is healthy, one request from the client corresponds to one request to the database. And if queries are failing, we have a work amplification factor of two. One client request turns into two database requests. It's well known that this kind of naive retry leads to a death spiral under heavy load, so let's fit that into our three-state metastable failure model. Let's say the database maxes out at 300 queries per second. Uh, we have a chart here now. X-axis is the offered load, the number of web requests coming in from the client. Y-axis is the good put, the number of successful responses. When the load is less than half of the database's max, the overall system is resilient to triggers because even if retries double the load on the database, we still have enough capacity. When the offered load goes above 150, however, there are two possible states we can be in. As long as we haven't had too many database errors or timeouts, good put continues to rise and we can get close to 300 requests per second. But we're now operating in a vulnerable state. Even a short-lived burst of errors can push the system into a death spiral. Errors will lead to retries, which pushes us into a database overload, which leads to more errors, which leads to more overload, and so on. Good put collapses and we get stuck in a metastable failure state. Once we enter this state, errors won't subside until after the client load drops below 150 QPS. This death spiral will definitely happen when the offered load goes above 300 because the overload itself will be a trigger, but it can also happen at lower loads if the trigger is something else. For example, if we're normally running the system at 70% of its theoretical capacity, which seems safe, 
A temporary network failure can cause us to go into the failure state and get stuck. Of course, there's lots of best practices for how to avoid this particular death spiral, but it follows the same pattern as more complicated problems. The paper has more complex examples, so I'm going to use the rest of the time rather to talk about uh, recurring themes that we've observed over, over uh, the last decade of operating systems in production. One of the most important lessons is that the sustaining effect is the true root cause. There's many possible triggers, and there's nothing wrong with trying to reduce them, but the sustaining effect is like a gigantic generic failure magnifier. After you find out that you had a production outage due to a metastable failure, the most effective follow-up is to weaken the feedback loop. If you just try to tackle the triggers, then you're playing whack-a-mole. A recurring theme is that the feedback loop involves some sort of a contended resource that is used less efficiently in the failure state. In our example, the database work was amplified by a factor of two when the system was overloaded. Surprisingly, the gap between common case efficiency and failure state efficiency often stems from features that were added because they make the steady state better. So work amplification usually comes from features, not bugs. Optimizations that amplify or that increase work amplification include things that don't apply in all cases, uh, caching, extra work to try to make the system more reliable or address failures, and situations where there's some sort of a competition between doing work now and doing work that will make future work uh, cheaper and more efficient. Empirically, metastable failures are hard to prevent. They've been responsible for many large-scale outages in hyperscale distributed systems. Each particular example usually only happens once because we put a lot of work into fixing it, but new feedback loops keep being created and discovered in production. I think there's three main reasons for this. So one is it's too expensive to only run the system in the stable state. In our example, there's a factor of two, uh, two performance uh, price difference between the stable state and the vulnerable state. In situations where the feedback loop involves caches, this ratio can be much higher, even, even as much as like 10x. So it's just not possible to stay in the stable state all the time. There's many possible feedback loops. So the strength of a feedback loop, the, the, the particular constant factors uh, depend on, uh, they, they determine whether or not a particular feedback loop needs to be addressed, whether it will actually ever manifest in production. And the strength of these feedback loops is dependent on the particulars of the actual deployment. So the feedback loop may be stronger in a larger cluster. This means that the first occurrence of a metastable failure may be at full scale. Even after it's occurred at full scale, we may even be able to, we, we may be unable to reproduce it at smaller scale. All we can do is just look back and, uh, and understand it via the, the, via the statistics that we already have. One of the most impactful research questions around metastable failures would be to find a systematic way to find them ahead of time. A promising line of attack is to identify what we call characteristic metrics. This is a set of measurements of the system that identifies the metastable failure state and whose evolution predicts the state transitions. In our example, uh, a characteristic metric would be the retry rate. The retry rate is low when we're in the vulnerable state. It's high in the metastable failure state. And so if we put the, the characteristic metrics, uh, we give them their own axes and put load on another, then we kind of define a, a safe operating envelope, a map, a region in which the feedback loop is not strong enough to self-reinforce. So I've drawn that map here. In the green stable region below 150 QPS, the retry rate will drop over time, no matter what the current retry rate is, as long as there's not an external trigger. Between 150 and 300 QPS, however, the evolution of the characteristic metric depends on its current value. If it's low, then it will get smaller. If it's too high, then the feedback loop will push it even higher. And the boundary between the blue vulnerable region and the red failure region is the critical point at which the feedback loop becomes self-reinforcing. If we cross the boundary, then the system will not self-heal. A map like this is useful during testing because we can use it to make sure we actually stress the, all the possibilities that might fail in production. And in production, we can use the map to tell us when we're about to go too far outside the safe region. So in conclusion, metastable failures are a class that includes many known problems, but we think the class can be tackled in a generic fashion. These are failure amplifiers. So they're, uh, they apply to situations more, there are a lot of different triggers. They naturally arise from optimizations for the common case. They're overrepresented in major distributed systems outages. They're hard to predict. And there's a lot of research possibilities here about trying to do more than just explain these in retrospect. Thanks for your time.